Vladimir Horowitz has touched and influenced quite a number of pianists, especially those who has ever considered to become serious in the classical repertoire. Many considered him to be the greatest artist of the 20th century, so much so that his works have been studied, modeled, and set a new standard for generations to come. Definitely one of my personal hero, I have been studying his works through the vinyl record played at a lower speed to find out what makes up his brilliant playing, and I'll attempt to share it in this episode. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing, my name is Ferdi Talan. Horowitz produces a very direct and pointed sound, unlike anybody else. And this is because of two things, how fast you enter the key and how soon you let go of the tension after the sound happens. The point of sound is very close to the surface of the key. To get a sound, you don't have to go all the way down to the key bed. This is called pressing and not playing because you could produce a sound here. And the difference between the dynamics, loud and soft, is how fast I enter the key. If you look at his hands while he's playing, he doesn't move an awful lot. If any, he stays pretty much glued to the surface of the key. Spacing will give you this. Consider that after the note happens, you cannot alter the sound anymore. So staying there is not going to help you very much. You need to go and wait at the next note with the full weight of your arm. As you go on, your hands will figure out the closest distance to go from one note to the next. And as the distance gets smaller and the silences become smaller, eventually what you'll have to do is just shift the weight from one finger to the next. Pay attention to what I do after the note happens, and I'll do it slowly. I'm always moving and waiting on the next one. I don't stay here, this is staying. It's as if the note is trampolining me to the other. And the space gets smaller as you go faster. your hands know already where to go. Brilliance is an effect, and what makes it is timing. If you take an arpeggio or a run, for example, in order to achieve this quality, you cannot play all the notes even and equal. Some are more important than others. Like language, music has inflections and different inflections communicate different intent and emotions. So these are a run of 16s and I'll play it evenly for one. That's when it's even, so fast. Yeah, but if you play it, I'll do it so. Final analysis would be It's more exciting than playing His ability to produce multiple voices as if a number of different pianists are playing them is mesmerizing and this you can achieve if you understand that the sound production depends on these things. Mm -hmm. 
each and every one of those will produce a different result. And the combinations to create multiple voices are endless. For example, here, I don't see this as just chord, octave, chord. It's more than that. It's two. You have to differentiate the melody with the inner voices. Yeah, so I go deeper here and stay a little longer while I play the chords very much staccato and I leave as soon as I... Right, so that gives you the two different voicing that you want. And then at the left hand, so what do you need to do to make this sound like one component? There's a function of the left hand if you see. I'm not playing it three equal. I'm not playing it. But I'm doing. These are your arsenals for brilliant playing. Add imagination into the mix and you have a rich playing field to create any realm of sound that you want. I hope this inspires your daily practice. If you have any comments, please direct them to. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.